Good evening, boys and girls. Welcome to another live edition of the Highbury Squad. We are doing something a little bit different tonight. We know how you love our diverse and interesting content. And so here is the premiere episode of the new limited series, What If? Let's roll! <laughs> Mind the gap between the train and the platform. Please stand clear of the discussion doors. The next stop is Highbury Squad. Fine, whatever, I'm ready. It's up to Kev whether it gets rescinded or not. But we're late, but we were recording. We're very busy recording phenomenal content for you. Welcome for back you. to the show. For you. So don't Shall start I... with that nonsense. Right, put it back, right, Kev? Put it back, put it away. Right. Okay, lovely. Welcome back to the show, my podcast brother from another mother, Mr. Super Kev, Super Kevin Campbell. Squaddies, welcome the Tuesday-ish club, what if? <laughs> let's go at ease and let's do it. Let's do it. I've got my fatigues on. I'm ready for this one, Super Kev. Nice right, one. here we go. Nice. Doon, 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 doon. Some of you will be watching the Premier, not the uh, the Champions League, so you'll be watching this on replay. I don't know why you want to watch Chelsea anyway and remind yourselves of the fact that we're not in one of Europe's most glorious competitions. Um, so here's the new series. Welcome to all the usual suspects in the house. My favourite knuckleheads are here and um, we'll keep our eye on the ball. Now, Kev, uh, are the boys playing tonight or no? They don't... Tomorrow. 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 Okay. All right. Tomorrow. Okay, good. Um, so welcome. So here's the premise of the What If Show. It's a new limited series and we're going to be doing a few episodes, but not all of them are going to be on Arsenal. It's based on football history. And the whole what if scenario. One of my favorite things to do is to play the what if game. One of the least favorite things that Kev likes to do is play the what if game. He had no idea what I was going to do tonight. <laughs> oh, so no. Kev, surprise. <laughs> oh yeah, thanks a lot. Thanks a bunch, I tell you. I, the what if I don't, oh what if. I, 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 I detest it. Squaddies, I'm telling you. Don't worry. Uh, thanks, little so. Um, Kev, don't worry because one of your favourite shows, the um, the the hater YouTube comments, is coming in a couple of days. So you'll you you know you like that one. So this one's this one. I love this game, right? So brace yourselves, everyone, because it's going to bring back some memories. There's only, how much are we going to talk about Arsenal v Wolves when we've played against them a week ago? You know how we love to do um, a little bit of different stuff. I don't know why I'm going to get a yellow. Is that because I'm going to bring back some horrible memories? But listen, it's part and parcel of being a football fan and it only makes it more interesting. So why don't we start with the biggest one of all, Super Kev? And I will read this to you. What if Thierry Henry had scored that chance in the Champions League final? And it's a double what if, because what if Jans Lehmann wasn't sent off after 18 minutes in the Champions League final. Now, that Barcelona team was good. I mean, they had Ronaldinho, they had Rafa Marquez, they had Carlos Puyo, Samuel Etu, Deco, Iniesta, I think, came off the bench. Um, we had Henri, Perez, Campbell, Torre, Cole, Freddy, Fabregas, Silva... Um, unfortunately, Perez was sacrificed when Lehman was sent off. You know, in that year, Kev, Lehman had gone 900 minutes without conceding a goal in the Champions League. Um, Burkamp was actually on the bench. He was turning 37. Wenger was kind of going through that, you know, period of... He's going for a bit um, more energy, yeah, wasn't he? absolutely. Thierry at his pomp. Both situations as bad as each other. It's kind of the chicken and the egg scenario with this one, Super Kevin Campbell. Look at us here. 73 minutes and 55 seconds. Barcelona nil. The Arsenal won. What if, Super Kev, those two things didn't happen? Um, I, I particularly think if... Not even if the two things didn't happen. I think even if Lehman stays on, I think we win the, we win the game. Um, we beat, we win the Champions League, 
And obviously, if Thierry Henry scores, his, his opportunity, which we all thought Thierry's going through, he's going to bury it. Um, couldn't bury it. And it just it ended up being a, a, a poor day for us. But if he scores, we win the game. So both, both incidents <laughs> determined, made sure that we, we, we lost. But as it's the what-if game, if that doesn't happen, we win. And the, the, the whole point of the what-if, Kev, is who would have stayed? Who would have left? Would Wenger have made different decisions? But also, part and parcel of this too is that, by the way, the cross, was it Pires who put in the cross to Thierry? It was a great cross, but his touch, that first touch that we've seen so many times, and the goal is right there. Uh, but Valdez, wasn't it? He made himself so big in that moment, Kev. The goalkeeper's I mean, going to do what the goalkeepers do to try and make themselves big. But we've seen Thierry and we, doesn't matter which keeper it is, it, we've seen him slot those, slot those, put those away, haven't we? And... Mm -hmm. um, Matty Kay's right, you know, many, many, many Arsenal fans have never really recovered. You know, walking past that European trophy, um, the Champions League trophy, and uh, what could have been. But we definitely would have won that game had Lehman not been sent off. And if Thierry Henry could have just taken that chance, we definitely would have won it. And then do you know what happens after that, Sophie? Do you know what happens? I reckon this team get an opportunity to defend it. Uh, that's it, what I'm saying, Kev. So that was my Kev. Yeah. Who stays? What decisions? Well, nobody are, goes. Nobody goes. Because I think Arsene Wenger then says, let's roll again. You know, you Champions League winners, let's roll again. And you get yeah. an opportunity to defend it. Yeah. Um, and it was, it was sad that, you know, Pira is such a quality player. He was sacrificed. Look how young Fabregas is here, Kev. Yeah, baby. Baby, baby. face. Look, baby face. I mean, it was, it was tragic. I mean, the referee didn't have to do what he'd done. Let's be honest. He didn't have to. But like in so many other times, Sophie, you know, these, these things tend to go against us. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we've won, we've won in Europe and we've lost in Europe. And, you know, when it, when it goes bad, it, it really does go bad. So, yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, this was a double whammy for us. It was a double whammy. Maybe that team stays together. Maybe some players stay together. Remember, um, let us know what you think in the YouTube comments so we can follow up some of your comments in episode two of the What If um, uh, show here as well. Uh, Super Kev, I'm going to move another. <laughs> Everyone's going to hate me after this show. I'm pretty sure of it, Kev. Okay, here we go to another heartbreaking situation. The Dennis Burkamp penalty miss. I what think this if... one's a bit easier. This one's think? a lot easier. It, it... Yeah, this one's a lot easier. I mean, it, look, if Dennis Burkamp scores that penalty, you've already you you break Manchester United spirit, that's for sure. They're down to 10 men. Mm -hmm. And you win the game. And I think it's then the treble's on, isn't it? The treble would still be on then, wouldn't it? Yeah. And so, you, you mess up their treble for your treble. It's like... it. I mean, seriously, it's crazy, right? So here's the scenario. Um, and I know Kev loves it when I remind him of these things too, but his knowledge is A1. Doesn't need reminding from me. Man United would never have won the treble. What would that have meant to Arsenal? Kev, one point separated them... Uh, from us in the Premier League title. One goal difference. Anelka was our top scorer with 17. Jimmy mm -hmm. Floyd Hasselbank, Owen and York joint top um, were were also joint top with 18 goals. Um, Andrew Cole of the United uh, had 17. Um, Dennis uh, Burkamp and Hasselbeck had the mo most assists with 13. David Beckham with 11. 11 players scored a hat-trick that season. Mm -hmm. And let me tell you who one of those players was who scored a hat-trick that season. None other than Mr. Super Kev, Super Kevin Campbell in his wig. He didn't score it in his wig. Do you remember you scored a hat-trick against West Ham? You battered them 6-0. Do you remember that, Kev? Yeah, I remember that. Yeah, that was my loan spell. That was my loan spell at, um, at Goodison Park. 
And uh, yeah, I remember it. Definitely, we beat them 6-0 and uh, we stayed up. So, yes. job, job done. Job that done. was the signing of all signings in the Premier League, the year that you helped Everton survive um, and became an Everton legend and a cult hero at the beginning, but then an Everton legend um, at the very end, Super Kev. Yeah, but you know what, So That... Because the Arsenal against Manchester United was was up, that was at Villa Park, right? And yes. because it was a tussle between the two giants, whoever won that game, whoever won that game, obviously gets the leg up on the opposition. Could you imagine how United felt after after that game, after Gig scored and they win the game, down to ten men? You know, you could imagine that the lift that they got, that would have been at Arsenal. Oh, yeah. They would have been real deflated and it would have been another sign, this Arsenal side, we can't, we, we try everything to beat them and we can't do them. It's, it's the psychology of sports, Kev, from football and these moments in football to the Ali Frazier fights, to Nadal versus Federer you know, to Verstappen versus Lewis Hamilton. Like, what's Lewis going to be like this season? You know, you go into Everton, they're looking, staring at relegation in, in, in the face. You go in, you start banging in the goals. Imagine if Everton had been relegated that season. Would they be another Nottingham Forest? Would they be a Leeds United kid? Well, that's what, that's what a lot of the Blues say. A lot of the Blues say we, would, we wouldn't have come back. You know, we wouldn't have come back. And, and I, I, listen... I remember thinking, looking at Everton squad and thinking they've got a great, they've got a great squad. It was a good, it was a good side. It was a good squad, really experienced, but they didn't have the one key ingredient. They didn't have that experience or someone who could lead the line and put the ball away. Because Kev, that was the year was um, Walter Smith came in for Joe Royal, right? And Walter Smith was in Walter Smith was in at Everton that time, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah, Walter Smith was manager. And in that same season, uh, George Graham became manager of Tottenham Hotspur. My goodness, that was a tough one. Gerard Houllier became manager of Liverpool. O'Leary replaced Graham at Leeds. At Leeds, yeah. Yeah. Leeds United finished fourth that season. West Ham finished fifth that season. Coventry, Sheffield Wednesday, Kev, Derby County, Middlesbrough and Wimbledon were in the Premier League that year. Yeah. And that was the year your old club, Nottingham Forest, were relegated from the Premier League together with Charlton and Blackburn. And let's be honest, I mean, how many years Forest have been out of it since? Wilderness. Look at Blackburn. Blackburn won the Premier League and have been out of it. And Charlton under the Kerbishly years, kept overachieving. They were decent, decent side. They were a decent side, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So this was the year, so it's the what if Burkamp had converted. And correct me if I'm wrong, but did Dennis stop taking penalties after that, Kev? Uh, I, I think he did, you know, Soph. I think he did stop taking them um, just because maybe that was, for him, maybe that was the last straw, you know, Soph. yeah. Because he's a big time player, and it, you know, for him it was, I've, I'm going to do this. I'm going to slot it, and um, he, he couldn't do it on the day. And obviously they went up the other end. Gigs with an incredible goal, uh, which still haunts us to this day, doesn't it? But if Arsenal win that, Arsenal push on and probably do the double treble. And Kev, you know? you, you said to me, do you remember um, in a show? the League Cup final defeat against Luton, you didn't think that 89 would happen after that. And look at this team in 99, they face adversity and it was a transition. There's a transition in that team, of course, to when we became invincible. Sophie, but not Wenger that, uh, Sophie, I didn't say that I didn't think it would happen. I said that's the, re that's reason. the reason Yeah, 89 happened. Yeah. Because it gave the coaches and the players a different focus. Yeah, you know, it, you hadn't got it worked out. You know, thinking we beat Liverpool the year before in '87, in '88 we got Luton. It, you know, if you win it two two years on the spin, we've got this winning thing worked out, right, Sophie? Yeah. No, winning is so hard, and if you take it for granted, Sophie, maybe we took it a little bit for granted. It comes back to bite you. 
Yeah, because the team was so dominant, wasn't it? And uh, and a little bit like, you know, I know 99, there's a few years before that in 2004. Um, but like you said, the lessons, the brutality of that loss, um, it was in our hands, like you said, down to 10 men. And the, the, the history changed, like you said, United wouldn't have had the treble winning season, you know? Right. Uh, who knows what? I mean, I think by that time, of course, the league was decided. But again, nothing really separated us from United much back in the day, Kev. Uh, no, I don't think I don't think it was decided. I still think, look, one goal makes a big difference. One one draw lets Arsenal back. You know, you understand what I'm saying, Sophie? Mm -hmm. And if you if you're down, if you if you're high, it's different. But mm -hmm. if you're down and you're knowing that team over there are not going to slip. It puts doubt in your mind. Wow, that's a brilliant point. Knowing that that team... It's like people who are writing off City now and saying, oh, you blew a 12-point lead and... Excuse me, City, how much are they going to slip between now and the end of the season after they slip terribly against Tottenham? We've seen them go on runs. It's a brilliant point, Kev. You're absolutely right. Um, okay, so number one was the Champions League. What if Lehman hadn't got sent off? What if Henri had converted that chance? Number two uh, was uh, what if Dennis had converted the penalty? Here we go, Gooners. This is the beauty. You know what? I love this stuff as a fan, Kev. I know as a player as well, you're, you're in the moment and you're... There must the, the juxtaposition to how we feel versus you feel. People think... Oh, players will just go off. They're going to go in their car and they'll go to their mansion and they don't care and this and that and the other. But you hated losing. With a passion. <laughs> How? With a um, passion. Hate I mean, it. we hate still, losing. I still do. I still do. But it's <laughs> a bit different because I'm not in the dressing room. Mm -hmm. you, you know, you got to remember, imagine you invest everything into games. Mm -hmm. It's your life. This is what you sacrifice. This is the way you eat the way you do. This is the way you sleep the way you do. This is the way you train the way you do. And this is the way, you know, you, you, you don't have the family time that maybe you want because you're preparing for each game. And when you lose, you're not successful. You know, you, you. I think it's such a brilliant point because people don't realise, especially like playing in England, there's no Christmas Day big fat dinners, you know. you got to play that. in the next day. There's no New Year's Eve, you know, you got to play. The, the sacrifices you make as an athlete, and this is why sometimes I think we come down too hard on athletes not realising. Like, think about, I was watching the Olympics and I'm thinking... Wow, that athlete just trained four years for this moment and they burnt out in two seconds. Gone. Mm. There's there's something just quite gut-wrenching beyond about those moments, Kev. Look at Arsenal. We've never been back to a Champions League final since that time. You know, Dan Marino never went back to the Super Bowl. Well, he Dan Marino said, can't wait to get back to, to the big game. Never happened. Never happened again. So you take these things for granted, and that's why under George Graham, that's why I'm saying that loot and defeat, Sophie, was so important for the group. Mm -hmm. You know, didn't read us the right act, but he, he, he made a focus of that squad, mm -hmm. a real focus. And, you know, in, when you get the opportunity, you got to take it. You want to be legends. You want to. You want to be. We want people to speak highly of you at this club. Win. When you get there, win. Yep. Win. 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 And the more you win, you win trophies. You be held up in high esteem. People love you, respect you. People ask you to come back for get-togethers and all that. That's what you know. You say, if you lose. People ain't interested. But if you do stuff like this. Oh, yeah. And oh, this. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's it's like it's like yesterday. I still love seeing that rock, Rocky smiling. It's like yesterday, Sophie. I, I, I say it all the time. It feels like yesterday because 
everyone is everyone has bought in and everyone is, is, is on the same train going in the same direction. There isn't one player, Sophie, who is thinking about himself, oh, I'm, I'm over there. No. Everybody is pushing in the same direction. And the moment you kind of step out of line, they drag you back in. Kev, we all grew up, I mean, I grew up playing football with boys, right? I grew up in an era where there wasn't a girls team in my school. Mm -hmm. And I, um, my, my school went to petition for me to play in the boys team. And that wasn't possible back in the day. Mm. I was really talented. I was Santi Cazola, Kev. <laughs> and I was too slight. I tried out for lots of women's teams. Um, and again, the Messi changed the game for small players and mm -hmm. slight you know, players and stuff like that. But what you experienced when I was on the playground, I, dr I used to pretend to be Liam Brady, mm. you know, number seven. I used to pretend to be even back in the day as a whatever. Kenny Dalglish was one of those, you know, a number iconic, seven pla iconic right? player. Right, yeah. right, Kev? Yep. Yeah, and yeah. you, you've won like, you've won the UEFA Cup. Like you've won the FA Cup. You've won the League Cup. You know, and to be in that position and not win it, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, you've done stuff that we've had pipe dreams of as kids in the playground kicking a ball around. And so when you get to that point, like I can't even imagine as much as we give our team a hard time, what it must have felt like, you know. Well, Sophie, to... I'll, I'll tell you this. Winning the FA Youth Cup, Mm. with Arsenal and um, somebody on, on social media today put a lovely picture of Alan Miller on my shoulders um, rest that. in peace rest in peace Alan Miller who you know was it, it, it made me smile and made me sad at the same time because you know not just because Alan Miller passed away mm -hmm. but when you're a youth team player so you only have two goals at it only at the FA Youth Cup because it's for 16 to 18 year olds. That's your apprentice years. Under 17, under 18. That's your lot. If you win it in that years, great. If you don't, you never, ever get an opportunity to win it again. Never. And the FA Youth Cup is something. Do you know what I mean? When you're young. Yeah, man. When you're young. To see, I, I remember being at school and going to Highbury to watch. Tony Adams and Rocky and all those guys play in FA Youth Cup game. They never won it. So for, for the team I'm in to go and win it, so you know how special that is? Honestly, that is so Kev, special. how old were you when you won it? 18. 18. So, it was, so it's the second year YTS. Yeah. Second year YTS, and obviously I was a pro um, by then. But and most of the boys, Alan Miller, um, Lee Francis, Alan Miller. Hilsey um, was, was... Dave Villier. Yeah. Um, Stephen Morrow. Neil Heaney was involved as well as a, as a youngster. Andy Cole played against Southampton. Andy Cole, Who had yeah. Shearer, Shearer, Wallace Twins, uh, Madison, Dodd. I mean, they had a really good side as well, but we beat... we. We beat them on the way in the quarterfinal. So to win with that group, Jimmy Carstairs and all these guys, it was special. It really was special. It's it's so um, it's so incredible. This is why I feel like I mean, you know, some of us, everyone in chat, squaddies, and good evening to all um, all of you in live chat and stuff. We get upset if we lose like a five aside kickoff. Can you can you imagine? You know. Can you imagine these moments losing in this manner and being in a final at that level and ex walking past the cup and experiencing that after the euphoria? Look at Seoul right in power, the air. Power, bang. You know, we had them, Soph. We had them. We did. We, we really did have that Barcelona team. We, we were the better them. team. We had yeah. them. We had them. And, yeah. Um, you know, that's why, you know, sometimes I, 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 after games, I don't, lose my, I don't lose my head because 
Sophie, I know how much these guys put in. Yeah. Do you know? And and believe you me, they put in the same week in, week out. And sometimes you just don't get the same results. No. You know, and this is what we're trying to build, that consistency to get us to win. Yeah. That's the key. And that's like, even in those moments too, but then like saving Everton from relegation, Kev. I mean, what does that feel like? I mean, you got people, some people who don't know what Everton are. Everton are one of the old big clubs, old lady, absolute fantastic um, football club who have been there and thereabouts winning trophies. And don't forget, Sophie. In the 80s, Kev. Whew. Sophie, uh, they, they, they took Liverpool on head to head. Yep. And we're beating Liverpool. And then when the, if you remember, when we got banned from Europe, mm -hmm. Everton were at the top. Everton would, were, had won, I think it's the UEFA Cup they'd won. Yep. And they were, they were going into Champions League and they were, they were expecting to go on and win that, to win, a, a, win the European Cup. They were that good. They were that good. They were fun to watch, Kev. They were 4-4-2, tough, great players, quality all over the pitch. Mm -hmm. Quality. We've had, we've had Peter Reid on, haven't we? Yeah. Who was a star in the midfield for them. Amazing. With Paul Bracewell and stuff like that. We, you know, we've had, we, we've had, they were superb. We you know, we've had Alan Myers who was at the club and all yeah. that kind of thing. You know, special football club. But when I went there, Sophie, they were reeling. They were, they were really, they were broken. Reeling. They were broken. They were reeling. Yeah. And, you know, it was that March window where in March, I think it was a uh, mid, you had a small two-week window or a week window in March where you could sign players. And that's where they signed me from, Trabzonspor. And it was only eight games left, so. Oh, my God. If you haven't seen the clips, you guys should really check out YouTube. Sophie, and Beast. here's the crazy thing. I didn't Beast. score in my first two games. No. We got beat. We, we lost to Liverpool 3 2 at Anfield. It was my first game. And then we, we were beating Sheffield Wednesday. And could you remember Benito Carboni, the little mm -hmm. Italian? Oh, yes. I was taller than him. <laughs> right. We gave him we, we gave him two back passes straight to him, two in the second half, straight to him. And he was, he was crafty. He was a great little player. He went through and scored two goals. So, so that's when we hit the bottom. We hit the bottom three. So we had six games left to sort it out. And we did. We did. Wow. Brilliant stuff. Okay. Love it. Love uh, Kev's, uh, you know, um, how we switch up and we talk about uh, a little bit of it because it's amazing that that season, um, the number of plays you had scored a hat-trick and yours was one against West Ham when you battered, uh, Everton battered them 6-0. Um, brilliant stuff. Okay, what if number three? Hey, you... by the way, do you know Wright is playing as well? Was he? Wrighty. Oh, at, for West Ham, right? For West Ham, yeah. R Rio, Lampard, Wrighty, all those boys were playing. Wow. Shaka, his lot. Yeah, they had a good side, but we were we were on it that Oh, night. man, yeah. Shaka, Sh Shaka Hislop's a good Shaka boy. Hislop. Yeah, good, yeah, great yeah. guy, good, great good guy. Good boy, good boy, yeah. All right, guys, are you ready for number three? Batten down the hatches. This one was a tough one. What would have happened if Robin Van Persie wasn't sent off against Barcelona at the Camp Nou? Let me take you to the beginning of what happened here, Super Kev. It's the 2010-11 Champions League season. We went into that tie 2-1 up from the first leg. Our Shavin and RVP scored in a truly famous win where our boy, Jack Wilshire, who was on this show, had one of the games of his life. life. Um, and, and by the way, congratulations to him. For He's signing with him. Yes. In, 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 in Denmark. So we wish him well. We love that. And here's, here's the cheeky Russian right here, Mr. Rosh Avin. We all love him for different reasons. Of course, the main reason is one of those. <laughs> so uh, Robin Van Persie scores. Uh, Busquets, the score at the time. So, Kev. The score, so we're 2-1 up. The score yeah. at the time of the sending off was 1-1, okay? Yeah. 
and it was 2-3 on aggregate. Yeah. Busquets' own goal put us in a great position at the time. Two minutes later, Kev, the game takes a turn for the worse when Massimo Busaka makes one of the worst refereeing decisions I think we've ever heard in the entire or ever seen in the entire history of football. 55th minute, he gives Van Persie a second yellow. Mm -hmm. This was our squad on the night. Kev, Jeff Shreves from Sky Sports confirmed to RVP at the end of the game there was one minute between when Robin Van Persie kicked the ball and the referee gave him the red card. Xavi and Messi go on to get two goals. Barcelona win the tie 4-3. And Arsene Wenger said to Pep Guardiola at the end of the game, you must congratulate the referee. I think Arsene Wenger got it right. <laughs> um, what look, if this... that didn't happen, Kev? What if? Uh, I Again, I, I fancy us to... Obviously, you say what if Barcelona are Barcelona. They, we know what they can do. But they were doing that against 10 men, against 11. I fancied us to, to, to see it out, Sophie. I really would. I fancy us to see it out um, and, and, and get through the tie. And, and you know what? It is, the margins are that fine, Sophie. But you know as well as I do, it's, so, it's hard enough to play 11 against 11 let alone getting a terrible call like that with a referee and going down to 10 men against a team like Barcelona. No. Uh, again, we are at the end of another poor decision. But I honestly believe we would have we would have seen it through. We would have seen it through. They got definitely got helped by the referee that day. 100%. And it was always going to be a tough ask to go there and win, but to do it in you know, to, to then have to battle that. But I truly think like, when I say what if with this one, it was it was a moment of that team, Kev, again, gaining confidence. It was the round of 16. This was to get into the quarterfinals of the Champions League and to have had the game we did at the Emirates, which was one of my favorite games ever by any Arsenal team. It was just really like a show, you know? And then to go there and get the early goal and and be in a in I would say commanding position loosely, but to be giving them a game. And if we'd had done that, right? If we'd had done if we'd had done them in that game, again, how what is this team? What does this team look like going forward mentally? Well, it's 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 not only what this team looks like because that gains the confidence of the team with not Barcelona out, but anybody who you draw. Next, he's going to be going, uh-oh. They are, they've just knocked Barcelona out last round. We, it, you, they've got fear in them, Sophie. Mm -hmm. They have got fear in them because they've, they've watched you take, Arsenal take on Barcelona and knock them out. <laughs> Massive. Yeah, totally. So whoever you're going to play are going to be very weary. You know, maybe change how they approach things a little bit to try and be a little bit more conservative playing to our hands yeah who was it you you're right true say was it Busquets who grabbed him by the neck sounds like a Busquets thing i remember that i totally was, remember that it should listen, have been a booking in itself yeah again sophie we're, we're on the uh, we're on the the, the end of some it's not even dubious, is it? Maybe the it's timing's really dubious. wrong for me to be doing this show. <laughs> but Do you know I... <laughs> what I mean? It is, it's dubious. It's dubious referee decision. It is. I've got um, more. I've got more. I, I know you have, I, I, of course, because we've been on the end of a lot. Yeah. And and that was one of them. But I, I, I truly believe this. I'm not saying this team would have won it, but no. I'm saying this team would have been... We would have really won that confident. tie, I think. We would have really come there. If, we, if Van Persie don't get sent off, we, we win that tie, I believe. Yeah. Yeah, and I love that Burkham and uh, Van Persie. After he was, he said his piece. No one held back. I mean, it was just, uh, it was, it was just it was one of those moments. Yeah, it was disgraceful. Okay, so the next two that was number three. We got number four coming up. Okay, and the um, the next two are a little bit different uh, because it's a different trajectory in terms of the the what if. Okay, so I'm gonna put this one up. What if Eduardo 
hadn't been assaulted by Taylor from Birmingham that season. 7.5 million signing from Zagreb. Just a beautiful, beautiful footballer and player was shining as that number nine for the Arsenal. He had 12 goals uh, up to that point, Kev. We were eight points clear at the Premier League, uh, at the top of the Premier League. We were on a 10 game unbeaten run. Then 20th, uh, the 23rd of February strikes in 2008. Martin Taylor makes a horrific horror challenge. He kept Eduardo out of the game. Um, that game ended up 2 2. It was the, Gal- the Gallus meltdown. Uh, we only picked up one point from our next four matches after that. Wenger thought Taylor should have been banned from football for life. He got a three game ban. We also lost to Liverpool in the quarterfinals of the Champions League that season, ended up finishing third and, of course, did not win any trophies. And this was definitely a brutal moment for not only the players on the pitch for Eduardo. Kev, what if Eduardo hadn't been injured that season? Look, I I think that team were, were, were flying at the time. And if he doesn't get injured, obviously, I, I believe we win that game and we, we push on. I believe we would have won the league that, that season. I believe we would have because we, we had enough in that team to win it. I, I seriously believe, even though we were messing around after, um, obviously, the unfortunate injury to Eduardo. But it just goes to show that, the, you know, Arsene Wenger used to speak about the dressing room being strong. Mm-hmm. That wasn't a strong dress. That was a weak dressing room. That was a weak ass dressing room. Because if something like that would have happened to one of the, one of, one of the lads, it should galvanize everybody to, to push on and win. So that's what it's got to do. It's got to galvanize everyone to push on. But, you know, they weren't strong enough. Gallus, the captain, had a meltdown. And when really he's the one who should have been rolling his sleeves up and saying, listen, boys, this is it now. We've been challenged here. Let's go. No messing around. And uh, that just wasn't there. So I I truly believe it was a real dangerous incident to happen for us. Obviously, it was really terrible challenge, et cetera. And it, it derailed us. When it really shouldn't have. It Mentally, us. Kev, didn't it? Mentally, yeah, that was... Yeah, it derailed us. It that was a tough us one. As a, as a that sport, was a, yeah. yeah, that was a tough one. Um, some of you are loving it. Some of you are not enjoying the memories. But this is part of being a football fan, guys. This is it. This is who we are. This is what makes us. You know, these are the moments um, that we love, we loathe, we like, we don't. And I've got another one for you here. All right. Now... You can suggest some what if episodes. Email us the hybrid squad at gmail.com. You know, this is a cross production uh, uh, podcast. A lot of your ideas. Um, Mask Gunner had the idea uh, for the debate, the last one with the name three things, uh, the good things that you think the Cronkies have done for the Arsenal. So if you've got any ideas for the what if show, bring them on. Because what ifs aren't generally up there. They're more like, oh my. You sit back, you reflect. And you also wonder how it's improved the club and how it hasn't. So, Kev, I'm going to ask you this one now because it it morphs into our modern day a little bit. What if the Arsenal had won the Europa League final against Chelsea? So, here's the scoop, okay? We know the players let Emery down. We know they did. But my question about this one that I find intriguing the most is this was the team of that became the toxicity. This was the team that kind of came across as losers towards the end. This was the team that definitely that let the manager down and the manager made some fundamental mistakes as well. Clearly upset at the end of the game, but we were battered. Again, walking past another trophy, another European trophy that we don't win. But perhaps there's a silver lining to this what if, you guys. Ta-da! Imagine the legacy if that team had won, Kev. Aubameyang's legacy is different. Ozil's is different. Do they all stay? Does Emery stay? 
does it do we even morph into this arsenal that we are today for me this one is the most intriguing of all because you ask yourself sometimes losing is a blessing because of the things you learn and how you move on and do things better and sometimes winning just perpetuates other types of behavior which some arsenal fans think happened with the fa cups in the latter venga years super kev obviously i, I want to win every trophy that we enter um and if if I, I believe if Arsenal would have won that that trophy, nothing would have changed. We still would have had the dissension in the dressing room because it wasn't a happy dressing room. There were clicks in the dressing room. The clicks would have probably got more boisterous. The clicks would have got more empowered because now they've got a trophy behind them, a European trophy behind them. So. You know, no disrespect. I think Emery's a really good manager. Um, obviously made some mistakes, etc. But he's still a capable manager. But it was that dressing room that ultimately got him the the, the sack. And um, if they win it, great. We, we all feel buoyed and we're, we're happy. We're proud of the boys if they win it, Sophie. But I think it just prolongs the pain mm -hmm. of change. It really I was. Does. I was also going to add, um, you know, a, a, another caveat to this one in that: what if we'd have won it last year, Kev? What if we'd have beaten Unai in the semi and Arteta had gone on to win the Europa League? The 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 team would still be dismantled and changed a lot. Like, what's your I, I, thoughts on that yeah, one, Kev? I, I, yeah, I, Sophie. I think. I think there's a reason. I've, I've, like I've said, I want to win every trophy, Sophie. Mm -hmm. Of course I do. I'm about, I love Arsenal. To, they're my oxygen, right? But the key to this, what's going on, is we weren't good enough. We can look at, oh, we messed up here and we changed it. It doesn't matter. We are not good enough. We are not that team. So... When it really should be coming together, and excuses get made about, you know, we played someone as a false nine and this one, and we didn't do this or didn't do that. The best teams find a way, Sophie. Mm -hmm. The best teams find a way. They find a way to get over the line. And that that Villarreal team weren't great. If we're honest, they weren't great. Oh no, but, not at all. But we weren't either. We weren't great either. And 2-1, coming back to the Emirates, you need to win by one goal. You fancy yourselves, don't you? Of course you do. You fancy mm -hmm. yourselves. And we had some chances that we couldn't take. Aubameyang had a couple of chances, couldn't take it. But we're not that team. Sophie, we are not that team. We, are, we do not have that connection, that collective toughness. That This team this year... Put them in that position, I think we win the game. Why? Because we're more as a team. You can see it. You like what you see. You see everyone's kind of together. I mm -hmm. fancy this, this team now more than I do the previous teams, although the previous teams had obviously the, the quality and experience and stuff like that. But you, you lose for a reason. And they lose because they we, we weren't tight. We weren't tight enough. So... Would I have loved us to win? Of course. But I don't think it would stop what's going on. Yeah. Change, is, change has been needed for a long time. Yeah. A long, long time. Do, do you think if he had gotten sacked, and look, this is the what if show, you guys. Some of, It's torturing some people, Kev. But I, I'm sure I, it is. I'm I, sure it is. I, I, torturing I, bloody I, me. <laughs> I love these kinds of shows because I think it brings us to how we move forward, like I've said, and our current history. I mean, what if Emmy had been sacked immediately after that? Does Arteta get that job? I don't think so, Kev. I think he, I think he does. You I do? He, really? Yeah, I do. Yeah, I do. Mm. I do. I think it's harder. I think it's harder to hire Arteta during the season than it is in the off season. Do you know why, Sophie? Because I think you tend to go with, uh, we need an experienced manager. 
because something's going on. But remember, when they went with the experienced manager in... And he didn't do it. Mm -hmm. So they were thinking, let's speak to people and find out what that... I, you know who I wanted. You, you know who I wanted. But it, that was never going to happen for, for whatever reason. It was never going to happen. You know, getting these experienced guys through the door who's going to want money to change the squad, etc. Wasn't going to happen. And you know what? They needed someone to go in. And don't forget, Unai Emery had, had battles with some of them cliques in that dressing room, Sophie. The main culprit was Meza Ozil. He had battles. And one minute, Meza Ozil was out the team, especially after. And then he was back in the team. Could you remember? Mm -hmm. yeah, he was yeah. in and out. So there were battles, internal battles going on. Obviously, there needs to be major surgery done. That's why they brought in, as you call him, a teddy bear with a shotgun. Yeah. They needed somebody to come in and do the dirty work. And maybe if it's an experienced manager, the experienced manager would want to maybe get the experienced players under his wing. Yeah, it's a totally to and, different philosophy, isn't it? It's a Kev? totally different philosophy. So to get somebody to actually trip it up, look, we're, we're paying them fortunes and they're not doing it. So we got to rip it up and start again. Let's go. Let's go younger, and let's 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 get this train on the track. Let's clean it up and let's let's get it moving. So that's why they went for Mikel Arteta, and whether people love him, loathe him, or run in, in between, he has moved this train on, and now we're starting to see a youthful Arsenal side. Yeah, we are. We're not obviously not where we want to be yet but we are seeing a youthful Arsenal side. But maybe, obviously, Unai would have been would have been there another season or might still have been manager. Yep. And Kev, all of our history leads us to these moments. Every single moment that we experience and go through as a squad leads us to where we are today. Yep. And sometimes, you know, it is beautiful in victory and harmony and winning. And sometimes the losses and the brutality of seeing legends like this lose on the biggest stage, you know, are all part and parcel of the journey, not only as players, but also as fans and for the club too, Kev. Yeah. I mean, you know, I've, I look at some of them pictures and some of the losses and it still hurts me now, Sophie, you know. And, and you know, I think there's a lot of people who... Somebody said to me, do you know, Kev, you've never lost a final for Arsenal. And I said, really? I was obviously involved um, in the UEFA Cup, but I wasn't... I wasn't... Um, I wasn't... It was it the Cup Winners' Cup. Mm -hmm. But I wasn't. Um, I was. I was injured at the time. Um, you know, losing to Zaragoza, um, which was which was which was real painful. Seeing the lads, you know, being in the dressing room, but we, we've been on the other side as the winner, and seeing the you know the loss was real painful. So it was really really painful, and um, you know, I, I I didn't like it at all, and. Um, Seeing some of those, this this what if? I think some of the Arsenal fans are gonna, <laughs> are not gonna be happy with this show. I tell you, because it does dredge up memories, Sophie. Because they're all memories that we have, we carry with us, and you know we put away in that little box in the back of our head, and mm -hmm. we don't want it to come out. And every time we see that Ryan Giggs goal or whatever, it's like yeah, you know you, yeah, shout the, cost the TV or something. yeah, exactly. The good news is the the next few episodes we're gonna look at other teams because you know we love also going a little bit beyond arsenal on the odd occasion you guys and looking at other other teams um for example the aguero moment against qpr uh you know we can talk about fun stuff like that and um, and also you know 
Lots oh, of people in the chat. I don't want to speak about Aguero. <laughs> You're joking, aren't you? No, but it's the fun oh. part of football. But listen, there's so many coming through for maybe episode two. We'll just keep it to Arsenal. Whatever you guys want, hit the hit the like button, yeah, please. Let, there's let 250 of you in live no chat. Aguero. Oh, but, but some people are saying, what if Stevie Nichol took Michael Thomas out? What if George Graham wasn't sacked? You know, what if Santi wasn't injured? Keep them coming. The hybrid squad at gmail.com. Send them in. And if you want and you're nice and polite enough, maybe we'll uh, invite a couple of you on to ask us the what if um, with Kev and I on uh, on the second episode. And, you know, uh, get involved. Right, Kev? There's a lot. I mean, whoo! What if Kevin Campbell wasn't sold? I wasn't. Well, listen, my contract had run out, so... It was, it was, it was all but my decision. But what if you didn't leave? But what if you didn't leave? Oh, yeah, but we don't know. Who knows? It was That's Bruce the beauty Riok, of so, the conversation. This is the filmmaker Bru- part of me. But it was Bruce Riok. It wasn't, uh, well, it was my choice. Me and Riok, no, 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 no. Okay, maybe episode two could be more something like this. I love this. What if ESR hits 20 goals this season? <laughs> well, we, we, we're finishing top four. If he if he gets another eleven goals he between gets another eleven goals, <laughs> crikey! And we don't make the top four. Something's wrong, Chris. Oh my goodness! Imagine if we hadn't have won the FA Cup against Hull. I mean, that was that was that was squeaky bum time there, Kev. Would, would, would Arsene Wenger have still been manager? Exactly. Then what? Because this I'm shit sure look like? the fan base would have been calling for his head. Oh, yeah, totally. Can you imagine if we'd have lost that final? Oh, this is the best one of all. What if we didn't have the Highbury squad? That is the best way to end the show, I think so, Kev. Have you enjoyed the what if, even though you don't love what ifs? Did I present them to you in a fashion that you enjoyed, Super Kev? Yeah, but I still don't like what (laughs) ifs. Yeah, I enjoyed answering, and I answered them as best I can. You did. But I still don't like what ifs, Sophie. Can't live my life on what if, my dear. I know. There's something about it, though, um, and this is one of the big ones. Many of you, hey, no Laguna, have asked, what if we didn't leave Highbury? I mean, it's a, it, it, I love it. Keep them coming. Keep them coming. We're going to do episode two. And Kev is going to show up for ep- episode two as well. And maybe we'll get um, a guest in to join us as well. This is the type of thing. Lee Judges will go off on something like this, wouldn't he? Well, oh, I'll tell you. <laughs> This is his show. I'll tell you, this is his show. Yeah, Chris, it's too much, a lot of pain. Yeah. Oh, no, don't be depressed, Tammy, because we ended on a good note, i.e. the Europa League final. We lost it, but now you guys are happy. Like, here we are. We're moving forward. We've got a new team. We got rid of all the, the, the toxicity and all that stuff, okay? Life's yeah, not full of depressed. roses all the time. That's don't all I'm going to say, right? Um, that's it. That's all we got time for tonight. I'm glad you enjoyed and didn't enjoy <laughs> a completely different show. Um, there is going to be an episode two coming. And don't forget, you can email us at the hybrid G, uh, hybrid squad at gmail.com to get stuck in. Um, that's it. That's all we've got time for. Super Kev will be back on Thursday with me post game show after our victory against Wolves. Kev, would you like to give a quick prediction for that score? Because we're going to be back after the game on Thursday. 2 1. Arsenal to win 2 1. I'm going to go for a lovely 3-1 victory. And uh, maybe a couple Hayland boys will score again, but maybe Lacazette will score. Yeah, Who knows? I'd, I'd, I'd love to see Laka get one to start him off, kickstart him. Speaking of great content, the Highbury squad uh, shot, uh, shot, filmed, you know, shot, we shot a movie, we shot a new episode of Get Off the Potsy this morning with Super Kevin Campbell and Dan Potts. It will premiere tomorrow night after the Champions League game between Atletico Madrid and Manchester United. You will not want to miss it. It is about Arsenal's best transfers. Dan and Kev pick their top five. It is a lot of fun, brilliant content, a great conversation. You won't want to miss that. So you want to tune in and I will be in the chat with you where we can all go back and forth and talk about it together. So watch out for that tomorrow night. Um, 
talk about bring you great content a little bit going out of the game day stuff is always fun we can get stuck back into tactics and all that jazz on thursday super kev over to you squaddies thanks for joining us on the what if show i don't like it but i've dealt with it <laughs> sophie thanks a lot darling for making some of the squaddies uneasy nothing wrong with that at times listen squaddies take it easy remember to tell your loved ones you love them because we love you all the best and at ease squaddies at ease <laughs> Mind the gap between the train and the platform. Please stand clear of the discussion doors. The next stop is Highbury Squad.